Are you a new college instructor who's looking for a really structured way of designing your overall course and designing small units or activities in that course? If this is the case, then today's video is really for you because I'm going to be going over Gagne's nine events of instruction, which is a instructional design theory that I think can be really helpful for educators who want really structured ways of approaching their course design. So, hey there, this is Erica from Ever Educating. And this channel is teaching tips, tools, ideas, and resources for new college instructors. If that's you, go ahead and click like and subscribe below. And like I mentioned in the introduction, today I want to go over Gagne's nine events because it's a really great way of approaching your course design and thinking of how to make sure that your students get the most out of your classroom. And so I have a whole playlist I'm creating with instructional design theories. So if you want to see those later on, I'll link it below. Uh, but again, let's go ahead and move into these nine events. And I'm going to use the example of an overall course design when I go through these events. But do keep in mind, you can use the same thing for one assignment or for one unit as well. It'd be the same nine events. So I'm going to use a first year composition class as my example throughout this video. And the first event is to gain the attention of students. And so in this case, it's you really want to gain your attention by having either a really great hypothetical question to start the semester or a really shocking fact about writing or being able to relate it. If you have all, let's say, business majors, well, what's something that will really grab the attention of business ma majors tied to writing? Right. So this first event, gain your students attention, because just starting the course with, hi, you know, I'm Erica, let's go to the syllabus maybe not the best way of getting students invested. But if you say, you know, hi, I'm a professor and let's talk about and you have like this shocking fact or this really important question that students will be like, wait, what's going on here? It can grab their attention and get them invested in your course from the get go. So I really think, you know, think about who are your students, right? What might interest them because of demographics, because of their majors, whatever the case may be. And if you are teaching a class where there is no you know, majority major or you're teaching freshmen all the way through seniors, then think bigger picture, something societal that might interest them, popular culture that might interest them, tied to your course that you're teaching. So first event, gain your students' attention. Get, get them invested in your course. And then the next step, step two, or event two, is to tell them the learning objectives of your course, right? Inform your students what are they going to be learning by the end of this course, right? So what skills or what knowledge are key here? Because you might have your ideas of what students will get out of it, but if you don't tell them, they might just be thinking, well, I'm in this course because I'm required to be. I don't necessarily need to learn anything. I just need to pass the class or I just want to get an A or a B or whatever the case may be. But if you go in and say, hey, you know, here's a shocking thing, this hypothetical question is important to note, thing to notice, right? To gain their attention and then shift into, okay, in this course, I'm going to teach you how to answer this question, or I'm going to teach you how to make sure that you're the best in the situation that I gave to gain your attention. And they'll know like, okay, so why am I in here? Because I'm going to learn A, B, and C, or I'm going to prove this thing about my, this skill, or I'm going to be able to um, connect this knowledge to my major after the semester ends, right? You tell them what the focus of the course is, what they're supposed to learn, so they know what they're working towards throughout the whole semester. The third event is to stimulate their prior knowledge. So get this, get them to see, okay, what prior experiences can I apply to this course? Did I learn things in my high school English class that could be helpful? Did I learn thing in a, things in a part-time job or service that I did that can be helpful here? Right? So get them to think, okay, this isn't just a class where everything will be new. Some things can be connected to my past experiences. What are those? So really have a discussion early on in the semester where you start getting them to think, okay, how is this course relevant to me? Why should I care? How can I build on my own skills and knowledge rather than starting from scratch? That, the help, that can help them gain confidence in your course, which can be really needed if your course is one that's difficult for them or it's not tied to their major, right? So you really want to, in the beginning, make connections to their lives, to their interests, to their values, right? To things that excite them so that they're going to be invested in your course. And so one way of doing it is having, okay, what prior experiences, right? What prior knowledge can you apply to this course? Now, the next step is actually presenting the content, right? So this would obviously start potentially in week one, 
but likely week one is your intro week where again you gain their attention you tell them their objectives you get them thinking about their prior knowledge then you shift into okay start time to start learning the thing right so it's time to start learning the content time to start learning how to use these skills or how to improve them and so in this case you know i recommend when you're giving them the content give it to them in more than one form i have a couple videos about using different modalities to teach so don't just speak to them, lecture the whole time. Have class discussions, show them videos, maybe have them listen to podcasts, give them infographics or other documents, right? So present the content they need to learn, but do it in a variety of ways, right? So that again, you can keep their interest, but also you can really kind of tailor your course so that, okay, well, I gave them this assignment, right? And they had to read this material. Did they read it really well? And if not, is it because they were confused? Was it too high level? Were they just not invested? What if I match a video with a written, written material? Do they get more invested then because they had like the visual element as well as the written element? So really get a sense of how you can diversify the content that you give them. But obviously this is the main part of your course, giving them what they need to learn and achieve your objectives. Now the next event ties closely to the prior one, and that's to give them guidance, learning guidance when you're giving them the content. So it's not just read this book and then take this quiz, right? Or this exam, it's, Hey, do this reading and we're going to have a short discussion of it in class. And I'm going to give you a guide when you're doing the reading of these questions to look at. And we're going to, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to facilitate discussion to make sure that if you ever use a concept incorrectly, I'll pause and explain the right way and you can continue on. Right. And so it's not just give them the content and get them to learn them like all by themselves. You want to make sure that you're there to guide them to achieving those objectives. And again, you want to make sure you do this in different ways. It's not the same thing week after week because students can get really bored, but have, okay, you know, this week we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a, a lecture on Tuesday and Thursday we'll do a small group activity. And then the following week on Tuesday, we're going to do a whole class discussion. And on Thursday, we're going to do an individual written activity and the following week so, and so on and so forth. Right? So again, I have a video about structuring your week in different ways that I'll link below, but in this case, make sure you're guiding your students. Don't just give them the content and them to learn it on their own. The next stage is to elicit performance, have them actually do something, right? So it's not just listening to you, reading things, right? They have to write things. They have to put things together, do a group project, maybe have an exam, whatever the case may be. So actually have different activities that you can have them do. And that leads to the next event, which is providing feedback. So in some cases you can have students do activities that don't require feedback. It's for their own uh, processing experience or it's for their own checking to see how they're progressing and it's not going to be graded, but you do want to have ones where, okay, you turn this in so I can give you feedback so you can improve going forward. So you can either get a grade or maybe just written feedback, maybe peer review, but these two events, again, closely tied together, have them actually do a thing, right? Practice the skill or practice applying that knowledge and then provide feedback for them and potentially have them provide feedback to each other because they can learn that way really well as well. Event eight is to assess the performance, right? So you've given them feedback, but now you also have to assess them, give them a grade, right? What did they earn by doing this activity? So you kind of really want to see here, okay, am I using a rubric that I share with my students? Am I doing more holistic grading instead? You know, how can I discuss with students how I'm going to be grading the work that they're doing so they know what to really focus on when they're doing their work, right? That's something that you can use in that guidance event, right? Guiding them in their learning by telling them how they're going to be assessed. But again, event eight is to actually do an assessment. So it's not just, Hey, here's your feedback. It's okay. Based off of this current activity, this is the grade for that. And if you want to improve that before you turn the final project, make sure you're doing and applying my feedback to your next draft. Okay. So assessment is obviously an important step. And then the last event is to make sure that you kind of really make, make sure that they retain and transfer the knowledge and skills that they've gained in your course. So kind of similar to that first stage of gaining their attention in event nine, you want to make sure that you say, okay, you know, you've learned the skill or you've improved the skill. You've learned these concepts. You learn how to apply them. You learn how to create this thing. Now, how can you transfer all that knowledge and skills into other courses, into your future job, into a service you use for the community in your personal life. So you want to have like serious and like emphatic discussions with them 
on how this knowledge and these skills don't just end at the end of your semester, that they're there, the objectives are there for you to actually use this work in future situations. And so guiding them to see how that transfer can work or where they can actually you know, use these things in other situations is really key to getting them to see, oh wait, like I've actually not just learned things, but I've learned things that will be useful and relevant to my life, right? And so that's a really important event that you don't want to miss, right? You don't want to just end with like, okay, I've assessed your work, here's your grade, you know, good luck in your future, you know, endeavors. Have that last week discussion. Okay, like we've learned about, you know, writing really structured papers, we've learned how to do academic research. Well, how can you apply this in your future anthropology courses or business courses, math courses? You know, when you're out in the, in the workforce, what job do you want to potentially have? How can having structured writing skills work in that particular situation? And so on. So having those discussions really key at the end of the semester. So again, these are Gagne's nine events of instructions. And I've used the whole semester as a way of approaching describing these events, but you can also use them for, again, smaller activities. So you might have on an assignment sheet, gain their attention, right? This is why a shocking fact, a hypothetical question that's really intriguing, right? A connection to pop culture. Then have, okay, what's your objective for this assignment? This is what you're gonna be learning. Okay, now going forward, how can you potentially have prior knowledge of this for this assignment? Right? Remember to apply what we learned in the, in the prior unit. Remember to apply what you learned as a high school senior. Right, That kind of element. Okay, now content itself. What is it you're going to be doing? You're going to be doing these things. Here's a guidance for achieving the assignment and so on and so forth. Right? Here how is when I'm going to give you feedback. Here's how I'm going to assess you with a rubric. Right? Here are the deadlines for this kind of el these elements of the assignment. And why is this important? Hey, once you achieve this, if you achieve learning outcome, you'll be able to use this in this situation and in that situation. So if you want, you can have the nine events in an actual assignment sheet or in discussion of the assignment in person, depending on what you prefer. So you can also have it in a unit, right? So you begin a unit with grabbing their attention discussion and then you have a discussion on the objectives and then you give them the assignment sheet which has like, here's what's going to be happening, right? So it doesn't all have to be written down in an assignment. You can actually have it as verbal discussions throughout a unit, but give it some thought, right? How can you use these done events over the course of the semester in a unit in one assignment or activity? I hope this was useful. If it was, click like, let me know, and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below.